Number 1. The Barn This is a story that I've hesitated for a while to tell anyone. In fact, it has been a long while. I haven't been ready to tell anyone because it doesn't really show me in the most positive light. But enough time has passed, and I guess it really can't do any harm to tell the story now. I grew up out in a place called Greasy Ridge. And yeah, it was a ridge. I really had no idea why it was called Greasy, though. I never cared to ask, and really hadn't even thought about it much until I began writing this story down. Growing up, I wasn't like a lot of other kids. I didn't really like going out and exploring the hills, ever. But when I got into my mid-teens, that changed. It specifically changed because my parents got divorced, and my dad remarried this real bitch. I just couldn't stand to be around that woman very much. So I began spending more time outside, anywhere away from the house when I could. So I began exploring. I would take a canteen of water and some food with me. I took a small hunting knife too, not that I ever used it. It was one of those knives that had a compass on the end of his handle. So, although I had never read a compass in my life, and I never used a hunting knife in my life, I somehow felt it would be a good idea to bring this knife along with me. The thing that I liked most of all was coming across old and abandoned buildings out in the woods. A lot of them were really small. They looked like tool sheds or something. The first time I saw one, I thought it was an outhouse, actually. They weren't very interesting. But I once came across a one-room but two-story schoolhouse, which was pretty interesting. There was also the occasional barn. They were interesting, too usually full of really rusty old tools or the like. There was one day that I did actually get really lost. I had started out much earlier in the morning than usual. I wanted to explore some new areas, and I headed out pretty far. I had gone over a couple of hills, and knew it had to be past noon by the time I got there. When I had gotten to the top of the upteenth hill, I looked down into a beautiful valley. I guess it was more of a hollow than a valley. And at the bottom of that valley was a huge barn. Quite interested, I decided to try and get down the side of the hill as quickly as possible to explore the place. Like most of the abandoned buildings I came across in the hills, this one had that gray wooden look of boards they had been beaten by the weather and decayed. The grass and trees around the barn had grown up on and around it, so it was reasonable enough for me to assume that it was abandoned. There were no houses, no roads, no trails. There was nothing that was leading up to the barn. I felt almost like a kid on Christmas, finding this brand new bounty to explore. When I got down to it, I found the enormous doors on the end, locked, with a huge padlock. It was rusted pretty bad, but it was solid. But that didn't keep me from trying to find another way in. On the far side of the barn, there was a door, and it didn't appear to be locked. Right as I was trying to open the door, I heard the unmistakable sound of a chainsaw revving up inside the barn. Scenes from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre flooded my head, and I imagined a scary mother like Leatherface about to jump through the door and kill me. I fell back down into a tree, but quickly found my way to my feet. The sound was coming from right inside the barn, and I knew I didn't have much time. That was when I heard it. The most blood-curdling scream and the most anguished screech of pain and agony I have ever heard in my life. I can't even try to describe what it was like. It was just like the sound I would expect to be coming from inside a portal to hell. Often to this day, 
I still hear it in my dreams. I didn't know what to do. But I also realized there wasn't anything I could do. All I had on me was a small knife, and that was no match for a chainsaw. Not only that, but whoever was on the receiving end of that thing was probably beyond helping. I ran around the other side of the barn, back towards the side that I had come down the hill on. Then I began climbing the hill as quickly as I could. Often, I tried too hard to get up the hill too fast. This had me more than once, landing on my face in the dirt. <laughs> I also kept looking behind me, each time expecting to see someone emerge from the barn and coming after me. I had no idea if that person had seen me outside the barn and was coming for me. I thought I'd feel better when I made it to the top of the hill, but I did not. I thought I'd feel better when I safely got home, but I did not. I didn't sleep much that night, and dreamed of the man breaking into our house and cutting me up as well. I have never told a single person about what happened that day. I have only now decided to tell the story about 30 years later. I know some of you will think I'm a coward, and I often feel like I am, but honestly, I believe the majority of people would have ran like I did. I still occasionally hear the sound of that chainsaw in my dreams, and hear that nasty sound of human agony. Number 2. The Cabin About ten years ago, I rented a cabin out in the woods in order to get some much needed relaxation. I hadn't taken a vacation since I got out of college, and the work began to take quite a toll on me. So I rented a nice cabin in the mountains for two weeks and attempted to wind down. There were other cabins in the area, and there were some residences too. It really wasn't far from civilization or anything. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from a small town in the mountains, really. But it was nice. And I had a few really good days of relaxation and rest. On the third night, I was sitting in a comfy chair reading a book, and I had the TV on in the background. It was then that I heard a frantic knocking on the door. Confused, because no one knew I was here, I got up and went and checked at the door. I was shocked to see a woman there. She was bleeding and a bit bruised. She looked frantic and asked if I could call an ambulance for her. I let her into the cabin and asked her if I could get her anything. When she declined, I went and called an ambulance. I then got her a glass of water. I kept asking her what happened, but she wouldn't tell me anything. When the ambulance showed up and they asked her to, she wouldn't tell them. They let her know that due to her injuries, which looked pretty bad, that she would have to talk to the police. I ended up having to talk to them too, but they didn't give me a hard time. And they pretty much confirmed that I was just a guy doing a good thing. Two days later, I was returning to the cabin from a trip to the store when I saw something that seemed just odd to me. There was a guy cutting down a tree with a chainsaw. It wasn't a big tree, and I guess the reason I thought it was weird was because it was on the property with the other cabins. The cabins were a tourist thing, and it didn't make much sense to me why they would be cutting down trees. However, although it seemed odd, it was nowhere near the weirdest thing I would ever seen, so I tried not to think about it. That night, I was again sitting down and reading, watching a show. The events of the previous night were beginning to be just a memory. For most of the evening, I could hear the chainsaw noise from outside. However, once it got dark outside, it had quit. But as I was reading, I heard the sound again. Annoyed, I looked up at the clock and noticed once again that it was past midnight. Also, the noise was a lot closer than it had been before. 
I tried to ignore it, but try ignoring the sound of a chainsaw. However, it didn't last very long, but it then started up again for a short period of time, and then stopped. This was even weirder than if it had been non-stop, maybe about the fourth time. I had more than enough, and decided to get up and check on what was going on. I went, pulled back the curtain, and didn't see very much. The noise had gotten louder, and I thought I'd ask whoever it was to be quieter, because I was trying to relax. It was right then that I heard the strangest, loudest, and most unpleasant noise. I also finally caught another glimpse of the man with the chainsaw, and it happened to be right at my car. Whoever this man was, he was using the chainsaw on my damn car. Confused but angry, I ran over to the door and flung it open. I wasn't really thinking, though. When the man saw me open the door, he took the chainsaw away from my car. I yelled at him, asking him what the hell he was doing. And that's when he came towards me with the chainsaw. He was far enough away that I could get the door closed and locked before he got anywhere close to me. However, I was staying in a log cabin, and the guy had a chainsaw. I could hear him press the saw into the door, and I could hear it begin chewing through the wood. Terrified, I immediately went and called the police. They assured me someone would be there in less than ten minutes. I looked over at the door and watched as the blade of the chainsaw finally penetrated the door. However, the door was solid, thick wood, and although the blade got through and he began cutting through the door, it still must have been hard work. Before he was able to get through the door in any meaningful way, the police showed up and arrested the guy. So why was the weirdo chainsawing through my door? Well, he was the boyfriend of the woman who came to my door the previous day. He had gotten arrested for allegedly hurting her, and decided to take some revenge on me for calling the ambulance. He insisted, of course, he was not trying to kill me, only scare me. Well, mission accomplished there. Fortunately, the bail was revoked, and I pressed charges of aggravated assault. He was sentenced to five years in prison. Number 3. The Intruder This happened when I was a teenager. I'll never forget the day for several reasons. One reason, I will wait to give you until the end of the story. The next, which will be quite obvious before then. I was 15 years old. My dad was a computer programmer. He tended to travel a whole lot, because his company would loan him out to other companies. It wasn't strange for him to come home, be there for a day or two only, and then be out right away the following day. And thinking back on it growing up, I never really knew who my dad really was. And this time, he'd been home for about a week. I won't forget that. It was nice to be able to spend some time with him, but that time passed quickly, and before we knew it, he was out again. This time, he was off to New York. My mom usually drove him to the airport, but this time, he chose to take a cab. That was the first really weird thing that happened. The second thing were the phone calls. At first, it was just one call from one guy. He asked if my dad was there, and I let him know that he was out of town. The man didn't seem to believe me. I could tell from the way he was talking. But he hung up. No less than an hour later, though, he called back. I could tell it was him. He asked if my father was there, and I let him know that he was out of town. The man didn't believe me. He asked to speak to my mother. I don't know what conversation went on between them, but I could figure that he didn't believe her. She was yelling at him on the phone and told him not to call back. Once the phone call was over, 
I tried to get my mom to tell me what had gone on, but she wouldn't. My mom worked nights as a nurse, so by 10 p.m. she was out of the house. I was an only child, so I stayed home. The phone calls from earlier were forgotten by both of us, really. As soon as my mom left for work, I turned off all the lights and then went into my bedroom to read a book. I used a book light, so the house was completely dark at that point. It was past midnight when I first began hearing noises, and they were minor noises, like an animal moving around in the bushes or something like that, but they didn't stop. I got concerned after a while, and I walked over to the front hallway, and I flipped the switch there. I was looking straight towards the side window in the living room, and I was immediately shocked to see a man looking in the window right at me. Our eyes met pretty quickly and held for just a moment before he disappeared into the bushes. I immediately went to the phone to call the police. Before I could, I heard the most awful noise of a motor running and knew it immediately to be the sound of my father's chainsaw. He sometimes used it to cut up logs to use in our fireplace. The noise was coming from the back of the house. I heard it then, cutting into something. I didn't waste any time. I ran out the front door and over to my next door neighbor's house. I began pounding on the door. It turns out the noise had woken them up, and I explained quickly as they ushered me into the house. Uh, the husband, a senior, who was really close with my family, told his wife to call the police. But he grabbed his shotgun. I was terrified. But his wife tried to calm me down as her husband went outside. I thought, with a chainsaw and a shotgun, only bad things were going to happen. I thought so even worse when I heard the shotgun go off. Next thing I heard were the sirens as the police arrived. So the man was the man who had called me earlier. Apparently, he had some financial differences with my father and knew my dad was going to be out of town. He had called so many times, I guess, to just be completely sure my mom wasn't lying. I guess he knew my mom worked at night and didn't know I was home or thought I was asleep because it was dark. So his intent was to break in using my dad's own tools. But he got caught. The shotgun shot was a warning shot. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. I wanted to thank everyone for the positive response to my true personal stories video. It made me unbelievably happy to see such nice responses and I only got one troll, which was nice. I want everyone to rest assured that I am completely fine now. It's been a long time since any of those stories have happened, and I have recovered quite good enough to talk about it with a lot more ease. But still, uh, your concern means a whole bunch to me. If you'd like to read print versions of these stories, please check out the Killer Orange Cat subreddit in the link provided in the description. You can also visit the Killer Orange Cat fashion merchandise store, which is separate from the one attached to the video. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please hit the subscribe button below, or use the icon of Ichigo that will appear at the end of this closing. Feel free to leave me a comment to let me know what you think of the video, and consider sharing it with someone you think might enjoy it. You can always follow Ichigo and myself on Facebook and Twitter using the links in the description. If you have a story you like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please send it to the address provided in the description. My main requirement is that the story is original, meaning it has not yet been read on any other YouTube channel. And whatever you do, please don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed because you never know 
where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.